Okay, here we are at the uh, fabulous Gibson Guitar Studios here in London. Mm. I'm joined by Michael Kiske and Dennis Ward of Unisonic. Yes. And uh, August 1st, I have a new album out, Light of Dawn. And at the moment, we can uh, have a little taste of that, of your new, new EP, For the Kingdom. Dennis, Michael, how are you? Very good, very good, very good. I mean, this day has been much easier than the previous two days. It's not, it's not so packed with interviews. It's a lot more easy. But yeah. Time to watch, <laughs> look at the guitarists and stuff. Of course, it, it, I suppose you know you do have these press days, and come in somewhere like here, you know, like I just mentioned, like you're like a little kid in a candy store. You can walk around and look at all these fabulous guitars, you know. So like, um, <laughs> you know, are oh, you tend to like swap one over one of your suitcases when you're here? Yeah, I brought. I would <laughs> like to steal a few. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, let, let's talk about the album. It's your, it's your second album with Unisonic, and. Um, First and foremost, people sort of refer to Junior Sonic as a, well, especially Carl Hansen in the band as well, as, like, as a super group. Yeah. Is, is that something you're comfortable with? I don't even know what that is. I hope we're super. We're super. We're just super. We're like some like I, I think we're a super group. Though. I don't think I have something else in mind with it. <laughs> I was like, there's a space between super, it's super group. We, we've been referred to uh, as all star, but I think it has more to do with the, uh, the years behind us. The beauty of yeah, the, the members. Exactly, we're so pretty. And I must ask you, how, how do you do the writing process? Because you're all busy guys, you've got your own side of projects. Dennis, you know, I've been looking at your list today, you, you, you produce of so many albums out there, you know, and Cole's got his own gamma ray. So, exactly how do you write the album? I mean, obviously, it's Pro Tools and all that, but how do you come up with the ideas? You, you plan on writing it, you, you make a schedule and demand yourself that you do it in that amount of time. And uh, I actually started writing end of last year, mainly. January was my main songwriting month and pretty much got the main songs done in a month, a little over a month. It was really, really quick, I mean, compared to the first one, which I thought took forever. And we, we, did, we, we didn't finish until Kai arrived. Not that he had to save the ass is of us, but he was kind of giving the last bits and pieces that were necessary to, to make it a round thing. Mm -hmm. And this time, even though he was very busy and did not have a lot of time, most of the songs were written by him. Uh -huh. I did a few, but um, Kai was just basically adding guitars here and there and helping with arrangements. Um, even though he wasn't, he was quite busy and didn't have that much time. This record came very easily. It was, uh, yes. it was very much easier time. than the first one. And where is the chemistry in the band? It's, I love it. That's, I mean, it's, I, I, that's because that's why I, I even like rehearsing with the band because it's, it's always fun. I always stays that way. Because then it doesn't become work. It's yeah, something exactly, yeah, yeah. you look forward to, you know. It's always a good spirit going on. It's like, there's, a, I mean, he's not a sad child, you know. It's like Kai, when I'm with Kai, Kai is, is always, like I said in an interview before, Kai always sees where the funny thing is in every situation. It's just the kind of guy he is. And I just, I, I, I just understand the sense of humor. So I'm always jumping on and I can just laugh my ass off by things he does. It's like, there's always this nice chemistry going on. But, Mandy is also is also not a sad person or a depressed person. So the the, the tendency the, the, the serious one is Costa. Costa is also yeah. likes to have a laugh, but he has the, the management side on the show, so he's he's the more serious <laughs> kind of person. But everyone else, uh, I, I think, is hardly in that mood when we're when we're practicing anything like that. You just mentioned Mandy's in the band. Obviously, he's been in Asia and Crocus as well. And do you think that that's what the benefits of this band is all about? Is the fact that you have all been there and done that. You know what all the bullshit is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure, absolutely. That's it has a little bit to do with age. Yeah. I mean, you know, there are certain things you just don't do anymore when you when you have a certain age. But also, it's like the fact that people come came from very different musical directions is also very interesting. Yeah, right. We've all been. There. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to go back there. <laughs> and uh, when did uh, Unisonic first sort of start? I think it was about two, three years ago now. And um, did it amaze you the the reaction it got from the fans? Um, oh, we, we, we were scared. We didn't know what to expect. And then when the first reaction came, especially when when Kai joined the band, um, a lot of people don't know that our first official show with Kai was in Tokyo at the Loud Park Festival. 10,000 people, huge concert, and I was shitting my pants. <laughs> and um, went out there, and the acceptance was overwhelming, and it's one of the best concerts I've ever had, mm -hmm. period. So I, I thought it was 70,000 people, because it sounded like it, but it was only 10,000, I heard. 
<laughs> he needs glass. And uh, let's talk about the artwork for the album, because it's got a fantastic piece of artwork there, it's futuristic. And um, where did the idea of that come from, and who was the artist? It was I did it all. <laughs> I mean, we, the, the, we wanted to have something that fits a little bit the first cover. It has this planet with the, with the loudspeaker and the space kind of thing. And then Costa had the idea of uh, taking the hue of Unisonic and making a spaceship out of it. And, and those ideas were, were given to the guy, Martin Hoisland, who yes. did it, and he just nailed it. it was just his first draft is basically what you have mm -hmm. on the spot. And was that an idea from you to him, or was that an idea from him to you? Kind no, of it was from us. We, yeah, we yeah. Had the, the idea came up with, I was always a fan of like, you know, Boston and the oh, yeah. flying course, yeah, yeah. Guitar and the journey with their flying beetle, whatever that yeah. thing was. And I was like, I think to be a cool thing, you gotta have your own UFO. That makes you special. Wouldn't it be great if we had our own UFO? And then Costa threw out this steampunk idea, I didn't even know what the hell it was. And he's showing pictures and examples, and then uh, I, I researched myself a little bit and figured out, okay, oh, I've seen it for years, I, just, I didn't know. Yeah. And then he threw this idea at us uh, with the, the UFO and well, the steampunk idea with the UFO being held up in balloons and strange shit. And I was like, yeah, I can imagine it, but will it be as good as my head imagines it? And yes, uh, Marky Boisler nailed it. Oh, totally, it, totally. It's one of those things that I was very happy that uh, actually when the cover, it was that long ago, like not even three weeks ago, was it? So sort of three weeks ago. We had a photo session yeah, yeah, yeah. in, and then on the iPad, I saw this cover, and, and there was no one in the band who said, oh, no, I don't know. There was no, everybody was just wow, thumbs up. Cool. Yeah, yeah. And that's always a good sign. You know? <laughs> yeah. And the great thing about it is it's going to look good on a t-shirt as well. Yeah, it's going to be an expensive I, I have it <laughs> It's like when we when we get like like huge one day, we make like the spaceship for real, for real. Like like, and it's like all the lights are there. And just imagine like a, like a, like a, like a show with the spaceship there, and, and that would be cool. But it's so expensive after that, we couldn't afford. We can't afford to play because it's too expensive. No instruments anymore. Nothing. We we'll sell your guitars. No well, you got to think big to be big. So exactly. we'll sell all your guitars in your house. And let's talk about your touring plans. You're touring sort of Germany and Switzerland and Italy. So you have egg guy. Good friends of yours, I believe. Yeah. So I mean, I, the Toby, Toby, of course, yeah. uh, with Avantasia, me being part of Avantasia and stuff like that. I think it's a perfect match. Not only on the personal side, also musically, it fits very mm -hmm. well. I think. I, I don't think that there's there there will be Ed Guy fans who will hate us or Unisonic fans who will yeah. hate Ed Guy. Yeah, it's because some music, in some ways, the music yeah. just fits, you know. Yeah, so totally. It's going to be great fun. Now, you've also got some festival dates lined up, you're playing like Banging Ahead, you've got the Metal Meeting in Moscow, and there's uh, one in Spain, which I can't pronounce, it's a bit of an old school <laughs> festival. Either. I tried, to. I was supposed to do a <laughs> CD. Legend of the Sun. <laughs> 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 yeah. But it's got bands like Wasp and Michael Schenko, and um, talking of festivals that you play at, do you like, um, as musicians and fans, I suppose, do you, do you like prefer playing the older festivals, where it's like mainly the older kind of bands, or you, you like to be Covered with the new music scene, you know. Which I don't, you enjoy I don't, more I don't like festivals with too many of those death metal bands. Mm -hmm. That's something I don't like. That creates a certain feel that I don't like. But other than that, I don't yeah, care. I, agree, I like both. I, I like just these days the festivals are anyway very, very mm. mixed up and mixed up yeah. very much so. And uh, as long as this is the, it's arranged well and um, the people are there, it's always a good experience. And as musicians, and like especially guys, that's both you sort of uh, singly. As musicians, what's the best festivals you played at over the years? What, what was the sort of most I think Sweden Rock, was always, Rock was always very special. Sweden Rock was always very special. Because it was very organised, there's always lots of people there. Banger, Banger Head Festival, which we're going to play I, I never played there. I've been there as a punter, yeah, I love it there, actually. Yeah. It's, it's a fantastic, yeah. well arranged, you'll love this. Cool. Great, great concert. Also, very uh, big variety. Big variety. I like festivals in general. I think it's always, it's always kind of, I don't know why really, but it is. It's kind of cool. You don't have that much to do because you don't have a sound check anyway. Yeah, yeah. So it's like in and out, you know? Mm. And uh, fair enough, like, first of all, I saw you at a festival was um, Donaldson 88, sort of the famous human by main headline. And I have and your strong famous memories memory. of it. You, know, you opened up that festival that day. So. Not the, we're not the very first, but we, we played, I think, uh, uh, the no, you, you opened the bill, it's uh, Halloween, Guns N' Roses, Megadeth, yeah, yeah, uh, Baby Rock Kiss, I, I, I made them. I, have, I still have video footage of it. Oh wow. I still have uh, with uh, Lars Ulrich, he was hanging around yep. with us all the time, Metallica, the guy, and, and uh, I even had um, Nico McBrain to do 
a, a video for a friend of mine, yeah. like, because it was, he's a drummer. Was like, he was like, hey, you want a cocktail? <laughs> I, 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 I think I still have it, but he doesn't have it. I should copy it actually from him once. I mean, you've seen it, <laughs> but in those days, he didn't have the possibilities like now, putting in the computer. What was the first festival you ever appeared as a fan yourself? You know, when you were young, with Blade, what was the first festival you went to? I think it was with Halloween and, and Masters of Rock. Could it be? Uh -huh. Monsters of Rock. Monsters, Monsters, yeah, Monsters of Rock. Rock, yeah, yeah. I think that's what it was. I think it's Germany, isn't it? Monsters of Rock. It was, yeah. Yeah, it's all originated in England and then it moved on to Germany. Yeah. How about you, Dennis? As a fan, you know, do you remember your first festival you appeared to? First festival? Oh no, I don't. <laughs> These I are things to... you should never forget, you know. <laughs> I used to go, I, I way too much drinking. I even remember it was Kiss, it was Cinderella, Metallica. There, it loses me, but the same. David Lee Roth, was he there in the German? That was Donington. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if it, if it was also in, in, in Masters, of, Masters of Rock. And Dennis, I must ask you, you know, because um, I sort of mentioned earlier, you're, you're, you're a producer, you're an engineer, you're a musician, you're a songwriter, composer. Rumour has it you make a good cup of tea as well. Yes. <laughs> And um, obviously, this day and age, the music business is different. So, as a producer, you got to sort of produce albums for like less costs. Is that true? Yeah, we got to do it a little bit more. Yeah, worth the while. Um, studios have um, also come down in price too. They got that. You know, it's got to make sense for me. I'm, I'm not going to just produce something anymore. I think, but uh, whatever, got to make a buck. I can make money doing other stuff. To be honest, um, I'm a bit more selective than I ever was. Uh, I try to help bands save money because I realistically know where money can be saved and where it can't be saved. However, that being said, I'm not willing to just do it just so that uh, we can have a good time with each other. Yeah. I've done too many years to just have yeah, another experience. Have a good time. I've had enough good times, <laughs> yeah. I also would have to do those good times with my band. Yeah. And for you, Mark, um, Michael, working with Dennis, obviously he's producer of Unisonic. Now, obviously, the must be times where you're thinking, I want the song to sound like this. Does Dennis say to you, well, I'm the producer, I know what I'm doing, it it's going to sound happens. like this. It hardly <laughs> happens. I mean, it, it is. Sometimes there, there are things where we have, uh, there are things that we point out, we say, like, I, I like to have the vocals a bit more wet, but whatever, <laughs> you know, things like that. But in general, I don't think it ever goes completely in the wrong direction or something like that. No, we discuss things, get to the point. Yeah. <laughs> And just, okay, it's been great talking to you. I know you're busy boys. I know you've got a well, dash to get to the airport, so we yeah, took a whole lot more, but <laughs> I'm sure we'll talk again another day. <laughs> Michael, Dennis, it's been great to talk to you and all the best for the future of you. Thank you very much. Thank you. The album, Light of Dawn, is out August 1st on Air Music. Thank all you. the best. Take care. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Really.